Ladies and gentlemen, we're so excited to have Mr. Felix Mago to be on the podcast. He's involved with Dash Next and Futerio, and we're so excited to pick his brain on many things, including the DAO, NFT, and the future of our crypto. Thank you so much for being here. It's my honor to be here. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everybody for joining in. Absolutely, thank you for taking the time. So. Rewinding back a little bit about when I was doing the research, I saw this Facebook live stream that you did back in 2018 about ICO and DAO ratings, which is so so interesting. Would you mind share a little bit background story with that and about a few things, right? What you're working on at the moment, and also how did you get into the crypto and blockchain space? Because I found that so fascinating. Thank you. I guess everybody has their origin story of how you fell into the rabbit hole of of blockchain. So let's start with where we are at right now. I mean, in crypto, we counting dog years. So I'm uh, for sure don't know what's up next month in crypto, but I'm very sure something new is coming, and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be excited next month and you know the months after. I was in fact just recapping what's happened this year and I like all the topics that that were coming up from. You know, layer ones to launchpads to metaverse to NFTs to boo. So here we are right now. I'm uh, working still with Dash Next, Dash the payment focused project, uh, very OG in the space from 2014, around 2014. Um, you know, building the dream of crypto payments, basically the first and and OG use cases of of everything crypto to say, hey, we're here, we're better than money, we're faster, we are not controlled by governments. You can do that. So what we do with that is, uh, especially in Asia, building partnerships, building the ecosystem, growing that ecosystem, doing a lot of business development, and you know from that creating marketing stories. Still focused on that, still bringing in new partners and extending that ecosystem. And you know I'm very happy to see, essentially, it has become quite normal. It's not, it's not wow you do crypto payments anymore. It's to say yeah sure we do crypto payments, and more and more of the big of the big companies are jo- jumping the train. So I'm sure we will see that growing. But you know, this year has brought a lot of opportunities. We're very much focused now on building new investment products and investment opportunities. So we have, um, yeah, I would say, a whole army of uh, young, motivated people playing crypto games right now, and we are matching investors with these young people. So essentially, we are. Um, uh, uh, giving scholarships to these players, and in the you know in the in the middle of all that, this kind of a you know, football club style management, where you make sure you know that people play, that people achieve their goals, and that you can um, allocate resources to games that are worth playing for the investors. And I just see that taking off massively. massively. And uh, last but not least, right now I'm very much focused on a metaverse project called Space. Um, it's a commerce-focused metaverse, and the idea here is to bring, yeah, essentially the play-to-earn um, vibe out of the gaming realm, and to say, hey, the metaverse is in in some ways not nothing more than a 3D layer on top of the internet, and like the internet, expect that it will change a lot, like the internet disrupted like every industry out there. Because suddenly every company has a web page and can do business online, the metaverse is going to do something similar. But it's about having the tools. It's about thinking what kind of tools you need. So, for example, you right now have only 2D web pages. There will be a demand for 3D web pages, and there will be a demand for people who are building these web pages. So, hey, suddenly you need 3D web designers. And like that, it will be in all other areas. I, my guess is this will be very normal to have like you know hosts or or guides or uh, assistants that are you know people in the metaverse and that give really you know new commercial experiences, new ways to earn money with having new kinds of jobs and at the end of the day completely new social experiences. Yeah. So that's just in a nutshell what is happening right now. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. And before we dive into how did you fall down to this rabbit hole, right, Felix? I just have to ask, you are working on so many interesting things and creating impact, right? How do you even 
possibly manage your time among all the things and interests and I assume like travel and, you know, maybe family and paths or reading and learning more, right? How, share with us, how did you manage to do all that? I mean, let me ask you, did you ever meet anyone in crypto who doesn't love what they do? So, you know, in Actually, a way, it's like yeah. you find you, you can do your hobby 24 hours and, and this is why everybody's so hyped. You know, everybody's working the weekends, everybody's working seven days a week just because you, yeah, we are too nerd to do something different in a way. So, and that I have to say, you know, it's like I, I have this feeling since I fell the rabbit hole and the rabbit hole for me started by writing a book on Bitcoin. Because back in the day, I was uh, I saw Bitcoin going to one dollar, going to ten dollars. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. You know, and uh, I was blogging at that time, so we figured, hey, let's you know, it's so so difficult to buy Bitcoin. Let's uh, kind of make an article series, and we we bundled that article series into a book called the Bitcoin Handbook, available in in German language, but it's super outdated, also to be honest, you know. And then things happened. I met some guys who were working in the DAO of uh, dash and you know we started that many years ago now and i think we are one of the few hundred i would say two three hundred people out there in the world who really you know, working in the dow for for the last years and i gotta say that's you know an amazing experience and it doesn't nice. sound like anything because most people just don't have any relation to what the dow is right i mean everybody's like throwing around the term in the crypto world but it's very hard to to grasp so yeah, allow me maybe to, to, to take it apart a little bit, you know, to put it very, very simple. It's kind of a completely automated organization that is basically predefined in a set of rules that are running on a blockchain, right? And the most simple example is what the Dash DAO does, or the most like, an, an easy to understand example is what the Dash DAO does. Like Bitcoin and like other cryptocurrencies, there are something called block rewards. And you can do, you know, you can give these block rewards to to stakeholders in the ecosystem. Uh, in the case of Bitcoin and like the very traditional blockchains, all these rewards go to the miners because miners provide a very important, essentially security function for the whole network. But Dash came in with a different concept and said, why all, this is important, but it's only, not the only important thing. So it's also important to have people who work in a DAO, who do stuff, who build marketing, who create, who write an article, who do a business development, who bring in a partner. So this is why we split these rewards. And while part is going to the miners, another part is going to people who put essentially proposals into a system. And a proposal is something to say, hey, I have an idea. I have clear milestones and goals I want to achieve. And in order to achieve them, it costs money. So, hey, community, do you vote for me? And do you trust me, you know, to give me those funds that I can, that I can uh, deliver what I want? And again, in our case, this project is called Dash Next. And we with Dash Next say we are building um, partnerships. We do business development. I go out there. I speak on conferences for Dash. And this is basically our proposal, you know. And in, in many ways, this principle completely turns around what we had before whereas you know i'm german i want to apply for a job in the states i have to go through an hr process i have to do all the paperwork blah 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 and at the end of the day it leads to a situation where 99 percent of the world are not able to apply for any job because you know sadly you grew up in africa with a nigerian passport good luck to get the job you know somewhere and now we are leveling the space you know and everybody can apply for for anything within these, you know, yes. ecosystems and these DAO ecosystems. So this is for me the mind blowing part. And you know, if you work mm -hmm. in there, it really makes you understand the shortcomings of all the all this corporate bullshit. You know, everybody's growing up with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would like to somewhat try to pinpoint the moment you mentioned. And please correct me if I uh, didn't get that correctly that you met uh, someone in Germany and you all start talking or working on DAO together. And which year was that, more or less? Mm -hmm. It was 2017. Um, wow. Raphael, a good friend of mine, he was one of the co-founders of the German um, Dash Embassy, called Dash Embassy Dach back in the day. So it doesn't exist anymore, ah. this proposal. But, you know, he... he you know, explain me that concept of a DAO, and it was, 
I kind of knew what it was, right? But it was like very cutting edge that time. It was the time of ICOs and yeah, Dash already was uh, very forward thinking, yeah. let's say in that way. It was in Absolutely. fact, you know, Dash actually started the whole DAO before the big the DAO that happened on Ethereum right. and that led to yeah, the Yeah, I was Ethereum literally about to say that. Ethereum that was after that, board. right? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, Dash, <laughs> we, we started, I got involved after that, but the Dash DAO right. started before the Ethereum one. So Dash, you could say, is the, wow. the OG of DAOs. Wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. And I would like to get your opinion on this because I've been thinking about this for a while, right? Like uh, me and my team were running this YouTube channel uh, slash media brand, right? And I actually had this idea or had this intuition that I just think it's so much better that turning this whole operation into a DAO. And so when it comes to like, you know, it's like personal advice, right? Because you are actually explaining this. Uh, and I think when you're sharing this, the audience will be enjoying this as well, right? So turning um, media brands, you know, that create content into a DAO, is, is this going to be any different? And how do we, or if someone wants to turn their passion project into a DAO, how would they go about doing that? Mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a very interesting question. It's a great question, actually, and and you know, it's important to to dissect a little bit that DAOs have essentially different parts. What I just explained, and this is why the Dash DAO is kind of a smoothly working uh, internet machine, you could say, is because they, you know, the the main thing they that this DAO regulates is the funding part, and in the case of Dash, you know, this is money that is that is created by definition by running of the blockchain and then a, a, an automated way to to um, to distribute the funds that are created, right? But you are right now talking to say we have a, a, a media agency, so you are yes. talking much more about you know content creation, operational work. And this is yes. obviously where the human element comes in, right? So yes. the moment we have a human element, things get things get much more complicated. So what I want to point out is there's different elements to it. And one of the one of the, the layers of that is to think about, you know, automating complete operations. Right? So the question <laughs> for in this case of you running a media agency with would be the first question is like what are really the processes and how can you automate them in a completely, you know, from A to Z, essentially, and then how can you make sure that there's also a controlling loop, you know, that people really pro deliver a result that is good, that is checked, like how can how can the operations be automated, how can the checks and balances be, be automated, and then in the background, how can all the processes of fund distribution, payout, applications be automated, right? So to get it a bit more tangible, um, I guess one... One great example to look at is also within Dash. So there's the Dash DAO that is only, you know, responsible for distributing the fund. So there's different proposals connected to the Dash DAO, meaning everybody right. can pro can put a proposal. So right now there's probably 15 to 25 proposals in that DAO at this point. And, you know, these are the Dash funded organizations that what we call them. So a few people have started something called the incubator, the Dash incubator, and the marketing incubator. So this is essentially um, a Trello board that is funded by the Dash organization. And within this Trello board, there are certain tasks and things to do, right? So I have an idea. I want to develop something. Um, you know, there is a specification to write. So I'm the guy who goes in the Trello board so I can write the specification please fund me for the specification. And then there is a manual process of redistributing the funds that have been automatically distributed by the DAO. So there is a staged process where, you know, the machine, the human, the people who put the work, essentially, you could say, right? So in that way, yeah. you could think about running your marketing DAO, saying what are actually the tasks, you know, can we make like a machine that, that gives like the overall framework and from there, define like levels of hierarchies and levels of you know checks and balances and operational work. So that was yes. a complicated answer. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's amazing. And 
even for such just in case for those audiences out there that might not be super knowledgeable in this kind of topic, they will also find it very enlightening, uh, enlightening as well, right? And personally, I think that turning what people are working on into a DAO it also dr- hugely increase the opportunity for the mission to be carried on throughout the generation. That probably even after that we're gone, right? Because it's just much more efficient, like you said, like systematically approach and to um, turning everything into a whole system that each aspect can seemingly work with uh, each other, right? So I think along this topic, right, I was reading this um, report from uh, Misari about uh, 2022, the crypto report, and they're mentioning that, um, and I quote here, what are something that um, this, the author, he said, I expect growth everywhere across Web3, though three areas are particularly underdeveloped. Um, NFT infrastructure, which definitely going to ask you about that. And number two is DAO tooling, right? And number three is inter-protocol bridges, right? What does he or she meant here by DAO uh, DAO tooling, or do you have any comment, or, you know, because you are so, you know, such an expert in this um, field? Mm-hmm. Again, also here are many different layers. I mean, the first layer is you want a DAO, you need to build something. It obviously has to do something with technology, so it would be good to have some developers on board who can who can help you build it, right? But it's not only the building. The, the difficult part starts even before because you have to tell what actually you want to build, right? And, and like you just had with your example, to come from an idea saying, hey, I'm running a media agency right now, and I have this idea I want to DAO, DAOify my media agency. Now we need to start think about what does that actually mean? What is the part you want to DAOify? What are the money streams? What are the operational streams that you have? And there things become very complicated, right? And this is why everybody is like shouting DAO from the roofs, right? Everybody's saying DAO, DAO, DAO everywhere. We are seeing DAOs everywhere. But you know, the truth is also, is it really a DAO? Is it really a working DAO? Or is it just a big dream? For now, I think we are more at the big dream stage because the difficult part is really to sit down and figure it out what it means and then to, to make it work, right? So what I, I think what we're seeing now is kind of DAOs as a, as a means to build a war chest that is, you know, kind of to put on hold for let's decide about it later. And let's just put the money aside so we can kind of find a way to make it work later. I think this is the, the stage where the DAOs are. And I guess this is where really DAO tools are, would be super helpful because, you know, now we need to figure out what to do with all that and how can we, how can we do anything. So I guess, you know, it would be, it's, it's, it's always easy to want to do something or yeah, how to put it, like, it's, it's good to have great ideas, but it's probably a, a good approach to start small and to make something work first and really to try experiment how this works, right? So instead of, for example, saying, I, I take my company and I make it a DAO saying, Hey, I take one simple process in my company and I try to automate that on the blockchain. For example, a payment process, like let's make the payment of all our employees an automated thing on the blockchain, right? So this is something to start with, right? So, and, and this is where, you know, do we have a tool for that? I don't think so. Okay, now I see. Now I see. It's so many, although maybe they said DAO tooling, right? But they actually need to go very, very specific about each, exactly the purpose of each tool, right? So anyway, with that said, thank you so much uh, for answering <laughs> In answer and entertain my personal curiosity. So let's heading back to a little bit to dash next, right? When you hands on involving in this organization, what is or what are some of the most challenging or most fun activity that you inv- uh, involved in? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot has happened in in the last years, you know. And and as I said at the beginning, I'm I'm super happy and super proud of of uh, where we are right now. I mean. The dream of crypto payments is as old as Bitcoin. Yet, when we started in uh, 2017 to really go out to Asia and build crypto payment ecosystems, we realized basically there was nothing. 
we started at a time where many had like a or many is also maybe 50 shops and all over bangkok had like a bitcoin sticker on the door so you know we we went there and said hey do you accept bitcoin that's amazing why don't you accept dash and then they they even didn't know about bitcoin because the truth is you know it's like somebody put the sticker it was like a quick hype but then nothing ever happened with it you know neither was the stuff educated how to use a bitcoin payment nor came any customers to do it so kind of you know we were trying to build that out and obviously talking to merchants you realize hey like if you're not in the bubble you're out of the bubble and i guess that's that's still true there is more people coming into our crypto bubble which is amazing but what i want to say is most people who are not in they don't give a damn about crypto and they're in fact very scared because they don't understand it and they don't want to take the time to look at it um, plus, obviously, if you tell them, hey, it's amazing, you can, can now save your private key <laughs> and you have to take care of all your security, it's not really a good sales argument, right? So what we figured is, hey, we need to get uh, all the automation in the background ready for somebody to want to work with us. And this is why we really changed the pivot or the pitch we had from saying, hey, you can take this new crazy money. It's amazing because you you are the bank and blah, 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 to saying, hey, I have a, a payment solution for you. It works the same like WeChat or like a credit card payment. And in Asia, especially everything is QR code payment anyway, by the way. So I provide you the solution. It's free. I bring you more customers and you get uh, money on your bank account because in the background, I figure out a process that, that enables you that. And that's the moment when people start to listen and say, hey, cool, I want to work with you. And I guess, you know, that's, yeah. That's kind of the thing we did with Dash Next. And I mean, you know, as time goes by, more and more players came in who enable exactly these little parts and pieces, right? Because also the payment ecosystem is a very complicated world. It's a different thing to facilitate a payment in Singapore, the European Union, or in Thailand. There's different systems you interact with. There's system money flows, the different licenses you have to you have to acquire. So in that sense, you know, um, a lot has happened in the last years and and you have to be adoptive with with this change i guess that goes for every job in crypto on the note about being able to adopt fast into things right i think it's a perfect moment to pivoting a little bit our conversation about felix tell us what you are building at Futer uh, and who you're building it for like I said, Puterio has started off as a consulting company. We are or marketing and consulting. We still do that, mostly consulting and helping projects to plan their tokenomics, to plan their going to market, to really give feedback, to make introductions, to connect all the partners that are relevant. But we have pivoted a bit uh, since the beginning of the year to really build out um, our own investment products. And uh, the main focus right now, as I said, is the play to earn hype. So we have started um, trying that out. I mean, when did it take off? Maybe in, in February, March was the moment when, you know, when Xyz Infinity became super popular. So that was the time when we realized that hey, there is a lot of players, especially in Southeast Asia, Thailand, Malaysia, the Philippines, who are in a COVID-driven economy. You know, it's like many of them lost jobs. It's not a great market, job market right now. The tourism that you know was financing a lot of people is, is not there anymore so this is really a big opportunity and and it turns out we were able to build yeah, essentially what i said before like a kind of a football club style management where we say we have a huge discord server where we have our people you know bringing in new talents training talents um giving them really the job opportunity and on the other side with our connections you know we are able to bring in investors who say hey i um I'm interested in this new play to earn thing. And from an investor perspective, also it's an amazing thing because if you look at it, what is happening actually is that now you have NFTs that can bring yield, right? I mean, even to, 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 to go back a little bit and put it in a broader context, what has happened in crypto last year is that suddenly every crypto can make yield because we have something called DeFi. And DeFi essentially, you know, is like redistributing wealth and money streams and now we we have that phenomena in the crypto space with nfts and in the gaming realm right so 
instead of sell instead of selling you a game, I sell you a game asset, and you can yield on that game asset by a currency I print in in the game. So this is a a very clever investment product and one that I see really growing. So Futerio, in short, is really focused on on that play to earn stuff and with the with the idea to you know to be flexible in whatever new games are coming out. So we are seeing you know now Star Atlas or Titan or I don't know. Uh, uh, um, many, many coming out. So it's like kind of constantly around uh, evaluating what is a good, good opportunity for investors and fun for our players. Absolutely, that sounds very interesting. And just in case for those who are interested, uh, we're curious. We mentioned investors, and what kind of investors um, you guys will have access to? Yeah, I mean it's it's for everybody. Everybody um, with a budget starting from let's say two thousand two thousand dollars can can reach out to us and um, uh, start discussing on you know what are the investment opportunities. Usually it works in a way a very simple way, very simple and straightforward way. We bring in an investor with you know a different like whatever he wants to invest and see how many teams or how many players can he give a scholarship for. And how many NFTs can he acquire for for that money? So essentially, you are an investor, um, and you want to be part of the play to earn phenomena. So what can you do? You buy yourself an NFT, and then you start playing yourself, right? Most people have either the time or the money. That's the truth. So the service is essentially to say, hey, I can tell you which NFT is uh, valuable, which NFT is right now most likely, you know, to have a good yield, to be part of a growing ecosystem game. And then I find the player for you to use your NFT and to go out and, and get these rewards that you can get by playing. Talk more about space and metaverse as well. Before getting to that, really quick comment about the report I just mentioned. They also mentioned that a big gap that we need in the space, which is uh, an NFT infrastructure. What do you think that they meant by NFT infrastructure? And what do you see that really, really hands on on the ground working and solving problems, what really, really we need, just in case for all the dreamers and visionaries out there, if they hear that maybe they want to build something. I mean, NFTs, you know, like, 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 like I said, the, the one thing to, to acknowledge is that most likely we have no idea what it's going to be in three months, six months, 12 months from now, but be sure there is a lot. Let's maybe start differently. I, I, I was always wondering, like the NFT hype started and became very big for essentially selling art pieces, right? So now you can have an original and you can be sure that I have the original picture and nobody else has it. That's basically the same, like, you know, I have a, a $5 bill in my hand and I give it to you. Now you have it, you know, there is only this one original dollar bill with like this serious number on it. So it was kind of the obvious thing for NFTs to start. But in a way, it's not really exciting, right? Because, you know, it's like you can sell art, yeah, but art is like one of many use cases. More interesting use cases come when you have certain things that have certain rights associated to it, right? Let's take, I don't know, a movie stream or, or a song, right? It's like I, the problem why, you know, why we're using Spotify and, and M and like Netflix is because, you know, they, they don't trust us to give us something because we don't have the technical possibility to say, you know, you have this copy, but you can only play it 10 times and then you cannot play it anymore, right? This is like kind of not programmable in, in, in the systems we have right now. So I think what we're going to see is that, that these NFTs are digital identities that have certain rights associated to it. And there's like so many different concepts we can spin. Take, for example, as well, a gaming character, right? I have like this gaming character in World of Warcraft and, you know, I start with level one, it's not worth much, but then I'm on level level 60, I have this shiny helmet, I have this amazing sword, I have this, you know, uh, uh, this shield that I'm, that I'm wearing. But, you know, like all of these items individually have a price and all together in combination even have a different price. So the question is, you know, what can I list at what markets and what are the options for me? And this is, I guess, where, you know, this NFT infrastructure comes in place. So there's so many different elements, like with the DAO, you have to kind of figure out the specifics and you need the tools to define them, right? So if you are an NFT creator and we are just creating a few NFTs, there is, I mean, you have no idea how many questions suddenly you have to answer and suddenly, you know, like things that became, become relevant. It's not only in deciding what is the right NFT 
what is the right blockchain you want to build the NFT on. It's also to decide who can make a great art. Is this NFT just a picture we show on a web page? Is this NFT, like in our case, an in-metaverse object that requires 3D um, features and that requires, you know, like all the shaders that are needed to make anything in the 3D world? And then, you know, are there rights associated to it? What is the use case for it? So, you know, the moment you start, you will see it's like a, a hugely complex, complex topic. And this is where, you know, this is why I understand we just traded art pictures, but, you know, frankly, it's a bit of a very childish use case in a way, right? So, yeah, this is where I guess yes. NFT infrastructure will yes. come into the play. Right. And that's definitely super interesting. Um, I think this is another perfect moment. Would you mind please share with us about space metaverse? How did you came up this idea or why did you decide to build on this and what problem you're aiming to solve? You know, really a lucky moment to find uh, the co-founders that are, that are involved. Shout out go to, to Batista Samidian here, who is uh, the CEO of this project and who actually came up with the, with the original idea. But he doesn't come from the blockchain space. So this is where, where we came in and you know, started from the beginning kind of discussing on on how do these worlds merge. I mean, you know, the truth is the metaverse and all these ideas are, are super old. I remember when I was a kid and, you know, I'm, I'm an old guy. So there were already like these futuristic movies of, you know, we're drifting in 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 virtual realities and, and all that. You know, and here we are 30 years later, didn't move. Uh, many steps ahead, but there's a lot of science fiction literature already already making it happen. So I guess um, Batis came especially in with a idea to say what are the shortcomings and why it actually never took off so much. And a few things were you know kind of very um, obvious in the space. Number one is it's super hard to build anything there. You know, like I, I had the example with the web page, it's like very hard to build a 3D web page and you've known not the tools nor the creativity to build it. So this is one thing. The second thing is many of these metaverses are really nice, but they're a bit ghost townish, meaning there is not so many people and you kind of lose interest uh, very fast. And the third thing is there is a lack of commer commer commercialization tools. That means, you know, like why me as a um, as a business owner should go into this metaverse. It's kind of, you know, it took a while why why I build a web page for my shop. But you know, now you have a web page because now you know exactly that you can earn money. So it's about really having tools for people to earn money. And you know, for me a, another fourth aspect, and this comes from the experience from Dash and all this interesting and very important. If I can go in there and get a job to do something, you know, this is a massive thing. And it's especially a thing because, you know, now we can bring in people that kind of work in, in this metaverse and it doesn't matter again where they come from or, you know, we don't need huge HR departments. We can kind of automate it all within the new metaverse. So this is where, you know, the idea came from and where we say this is our angle to build a metaverse, you know, to kind of, uh, yeah, fill these gaps in the market. Absolutely. So what's you and your co-founder and your team's goal for the next, let's say, three to six months for Space Metaverse? We're right now in the phase of um, planning a token sale. So expect uh, more info on that in the next month. We're planning an NFT concept with an initial sale of um, avatars, but then have like many kind of NFTs with benefits, I call them, like utility kind of based NFTs in the pipeline. So we're thinking about concepts, you know, can you have um, uh, NFTs, for example, that like, let's say the super, uh, the, the rockstar NFT that enables you to go to all concerts for a discounted rate or something, or to buy something, you know, you love for a discounted rate, or, you know, what whatever it is, there's like a million ideas we are spinning right now. I can't tell too much this, this is very much in the making um the alpha version is out already the 0 0.1 you can check it out on tryspace.com 
Uh, you can enter the rooms you can play around with. So we're right now building all the crypto layers. We are building easy onboarding tools, Web3 tools. Um, basically, I, I want to have a smooth user flow that people do not need to know about blockchain to start using it. So this is something we're building kind of as, as bridges in the background. We are launching on different chains, Polygon, Ethereum, and uh, yeah, or two, two for certain, maybe three. Um, and yeah, there is you know a lot of things that that uh, will happen there, and I'm I'm super super excited to build this out. And at the same time, of course, we are kind of building the product while you know all this crypto layer is is uh, is coming. Oh, super interesting, and definitely um, at the end of the podcast, we'll definitely for you to have a call to action for people to follow all your different projects endeavors, right? So on that note, you mentioned uh, the past, maybe a few minutes we mentioned, we'd like to get your opinion and advice on this, right? Let's say, for example, some audience out there that they are maybe 15 or 18 years old, right? They want to learn more about NFT and the metaverse, right? What do you think is the best way for them to learn? That's a fantastic question. And I guess, the, the the very good thing about the world we are living in right now, I think it's on YouTube and whatever you want to learn, you can go and, and, you know, and check it out. I, instead of saying, Hey, it's so complicated. I don't know. Just pick something to start with. I think one very low hanging fruit to start with is you are just completely new in crypto. Get a crypto wallet, get whatever currency on this crypto wallet, make your first transfer. Then find out what is Web3 and how do Web3 wallet work. Start staking, LPing something in DeFi and then start a little bit into getting into the world of NFTs and, and learn, you know, the dynamics of that and about the prices, about the rarity of things. And again, try that out and, you know, try it with maybe chains that that don't make you poor you know it's not really recommendable at this point to start with ethereum i think if you are if you don't want to just you know spend a thousand bucks in fee for <laughs> for a few transactions so there are some good protocols out there you know i would say polygon Solana, even binance smart chain are are great places to start because you know just you can just send the road five bucks to try it out you know if you will lose five bucks it's not good but it's uh, you know, you will not uh, die from it better than suddenly losing a thousand bucks by doing a mistake. And yes, absolutely. And um, also, don't you be say afraid to do mistakes, by the way. That's something very important. You know, you will do mistakes. Everybody will do mistakes. But that's why I tried out with, uh, with the risk management approach. Yes, absolutely. appreciate you. And Felix, what you said reminded me of one of my friends. He mentioned to me that before he would invest or tell his friends about, or even do deeply research on Reddit, he would try the product himself. Like he would really generally enjoy, let's say the transaction speed and you know the fee, and then he will actually look more into it, right? So I think that is something uh, for uh, people who are very, very interested or wanting to get into the industry to keep in mind, right? Just like maybe probably i say for majority of people before they buy the apple stock they probably have an iphone or have a macbook and then they decide okay cool they're actually doing great stuff uh, let me actually invest in them so i think that's uh thank you for the advice i would like to <laughs> hear a comment about because i saw your bio that guest lecture for DeFi at ucla um when was the last time you were at ucla and tell us about you know what's it like to be a, a guest lecturer for DeFi mm -hmm. in uh, uh beautiful los angeles because i usually live there yeah thank you so much this guest lecture is just for an online course so i'm not living in in la or have to go there to do to do this lecture Yet there, I'm super happy that really a few people already reached out to me of the students there and, you know, wanted to learn more and wanted to know more. Um, it came because I, uh, uh, have a good connection to Alex, who is the founder of this institute, right? And, and I think I was in the lucky situation to tell him a lot about DeFi at one point when, when it all took off, you know, and then things happened and came to another. And it just reminds me that I urgently have to update that course with all the DeFi 2.0 stuff. 
stuff that has recently been happening and you know kind of making a lot of the old DeFi 1.0 obsolete or different let's say so um hey i'm super happy check out this course check out what what alex is doing from uh, alex nascimento from ucla my props to him and yeah yes i was in 2019 20 the big the end of 2018 beginning of 2019 when uh me and my friend um were doing some fun project and we were we were talking with alex at the time he was writing a book uh, about blockchain at the time like he's so passionate about blockchain and so yeah um it's super good cool to see you know the the small circle here connecting the dots like, either from one way or another which is incredible and one thing you mentioned earlier that i would like to pick your brain on which is do you have any advice on finding co-founder or finding team members oh that's a good one um i think go out there and go on meetups Think locally, act globally. I guess it's it's a good way, good way to start with. I can say I like, I was hanging in my in my old job, like finance banking consultancy for a very long time, and kind of you know always came home too tired until I realized there's this thing called meetup, and there's a lot of things happening, and it's not only you know not only I meet, I get beer for free here in Berlin and free pizza. But I also meet like super nice and super interesting people, many of them who have become very dear friends over the years. So I guess networking is really a big part and there's, you know, just get engaged, interact with people and you will yes. see there, there is opportunities everywhere. Also this, yeah, I think that's one, one, one important thing, you know, like I, I talk to many people say, yeah, but I don't know about this blockchain. I'm like doing something completely different. You know, take it from the other side saying, hey, this industry is so new. Everybody's looking for DeFi experts with 15 years of experience in, in uh, big names. You know, it doesn't exist. That's the truth. So be clever, start somewhere and, and just, you know, come on a personal yes. level with people. Yes, absolutely. And even rewinding back a little bit how we connected, because that day um, I was just so tired because we're doing like interview and running around the event all day. And we... I. I wasn't supposed to be there, but one of my friend, uh, um, dear friend Nick, and he just dragged us, be like, "Hey, come, come to the party, check it out really quick." And I think it was right when we go uh, go down to the basement of this little mansion party or whatever. And then you are just so nice and standing there, and and my friend start talking to you first, and we're like, "Hey, let's take this selfie." And then we start, we just yeah, and we just talk, chatted. Maybe me and you chat for like 15, 20 th seconds, and but we managed to keep in touch, and now. We are, you know, doing this interview and further the relationship, which I think really, right, being, putting yourself out there is create opportunity for something beautiful to happen. Maybe it will happen. Maybe sometimes they won't, but exactly. putting yourself out there is always uh, such a good thing to do. Exactly. I wasn't supposed to be there as well. It was very coincidence that I met one guy, you know, I met like years ago and he said, hey, I have this event tomorrow. Come, come, come. Ah, so really funny wow, that's you know, exactly how things turn out you don't know just yes. take a chance yes absolutely exactly. for sure most so, things will more things will happen than you just stay in bed <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right exactly yeah um this is another different kind of advice because uh much audience or listeners for this podcast they are a little bit towards the younger generation right and it's sometimes i think back about if I were 18 to 22 years old, still in college or university, what was some kind of advice that I'm looking for the most, right? And that's also one reason I asked earlier about this work-life balance question, right? So I'm um, not sure if you're in currently in a romantic relationship, but this is what I ask every single guest, that Felix, do you have any relationship advice? That's a good one. That's a, that's a very tough one. So the truth is, I know many people who have constant fights with their with their girlfriend. I am personally probably also hard to take because I'm on the phone really up to 16 hours every day. So there, you know, there are months where basically I do not have a meal without being on the, in the phone call at the same time and just always muting myself so I can, you know, chew without disturbing people. But it's not that I have to do it or something. It's just that I really want to do it, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, I have like, there is this one 30 minute slot today so let's book it you know it just it just happens and the calendar is getting full so i guess i mean be be realistic and be honest to yourself you know what do you really want i don't 
I don't recommend that lifestyle to anybody, you know, just because you have to do it. But if you want to do it, then, you know, find people who, who are okay with it, I guess, you know, and I'm, yeah. um, yeah, it's not, you know, it's pointless to, to, to live it if you, if you're in a constant state of fighting because, you know, you have to justify yourself. So I guess that's, uh, that's the answer. To clarify a little bit and also for my, personally, for my curiosity, right? So your partner is okay and very supportive with you, let's like say, for example, being on the phone like 16 hours a day, like for work, for, for working on what you're passionate about. Yeah, absolutely. She's also um, getting there herself. <laughs> Is she working in uh, crypto and blockchain space yeah, as well yeah. or no? No, she does. Yeah. No, she does. Okay. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Super, How about super you? Cool what are the other people answer to this question? It's a very unique one. I like that question. Nobody ever asked I know. Me that. I know. <laughs> Last week, have um had a gentleman, which I also met him um, from Malta. He mentioned to me that he, I would say a little bit similar with, or maybe exactly what you are doing and with what I'm doing too, right? Because we're just so passionate about what we're doing. So he like a little bit here and there gets the people around him, for example, his girlfriend or family to somewhat involved into what he's doing, right? Being supportive a little bit, right? Um, even personally for me, right? Uh, sometimes here and there, you know, uh, because my girlfriend's busy as well. But sometimes I will ask her to like, you know, um, give me some opinion about something I'm working on, right? You know, share something about NFT um, with her. So that's one of them. Another one is um, communicate, communicate, communicate. And another one that I really, really enjoy, which is from uh, uh, acting editor in chief of Coin Telegraph. Uh, amazing person christina she is just like you right like she's so busy but she is uh, like you in this aspect so busy but on the other aspect like she will make sure that have time like even maybe dinner or whatever it is right or breakfast right actually put down the phone to make sure okay this is our time together and we're blocking it out for us that the quality time that's still there right i think that's, that's beautiful right i Which can tell is, you that it's much more frustrating if you know if you're unhappy with what you do and you are like going to work and and in the first 10 minutes think about the next eight hours you have to sit there this is like the this is daily torture you know and i had this moment sitting in a german bank in a suit in the summer without aircon asking myself like what the hell wow you know yeah. it's no point yeah. of of making myself miserable with you know wearing a suit yeah. for no reason <laughs> absolutely now you're free i live close to the beach in thailand so you know traveling around the world <laughs> so life is good right um yeah this is my personal curiosity right although uh you have mentioned and i know that as well right it's so hard to predict what's going to be hot what's going to be popping in the next three months uh for nft right but there are more and more projects or along those lines, um, they aim to solve the problem when it comes to um, in the in music industry, right? For example, NFT, like you know, music NFT. Do you have any comment on that to so see where that's going? You know, um, I just have a feeling that's probably going to be big. You know, but um, you know, because they are still the musicians are still in a big general as, as artists, right? Although maybe they don't exactly paint, but you know, like a music, a song could be also, you know, uh, being sell or uh, being sold into that kind of format. So do you have any comment or advice? Good question. I guess that comes uh, down to the tooling again. Do you have any tools that can help musicians? Because for sure musicians are, you know, they make music. They're most likely not the complete crypto nerd who, you know, know how to, how to program digital rights on a on a song? So this is, I guess, where. Yeah, I hope we will we will find better solution. I mean, it's also a very old thing to talk about. I I I hear that since 2016, 17, a lot of, you know, uh, solutions for the music industry. I hope something will take off. I, yeah, I find it even more ridiculous where we are with the music movie industry because this is even more bullshit, right? I mean, now we're we're having all these rights and and. I, I grew up in Germany, so always we had to wait for movies six months that were already playing in the States. And you ask yourself, you know, why not? And now, I've, like, try to try to legally stream a, a Marvel movie in Thailand, right? Good luck with that because, you know, sorry, Disney Plus is not available. And sorry, we took out all the Marvel stuff of all the other of all the other offers. So, you know, what the hell is that? You know, we are living in 2021 and, 
and people just cannot figure out the right distribution per country on stuff or you know you even have like geo blockers and it's kind of really coming in with very old systems in the internet age and now in the web3 and crypto age it's just so obviously ridiculous that you know it's just a matter of time for me until something some solution takes off and you know people see it makes more money if you do it modern Call to action: Where can people follow you on Twitter or your project?、Um, let us know. And also, obviously, I'm going to put in the show notes as well. Perfect. So, Felix Mago on、um, on LinkedIn, Felix Mago Crypto on、uh, Twitter. Please follow me there. You can also follow Futerio, F-U-T-E-R-I-O. This is、uh, as well on all the social media channels. Futerio dot com is the web page, and Tryspace dot com. Is the project webpage for space, the metaverse, and as I said, version zero point one is out. You can check it out. I just saw we have a Christmas room even built, like a snowy, with a little fire inside. You know, just to hang out、uh, and to check out how the metaverse experience is. And I can tell you, it's really funny if you kind of do like a, a company meeting or a meeting with friends, like in the metaverse. It's a funny, funny experience to. To try out, and more to come soon. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you, I could tell you something you didn't know, or that is helpful for your future plans. Absolutely, I trust that your time and your insight is super, super helpful. And let's wrap it up for today. And cannot wait for the update for the project and the changes that you're bringing to the world. Thank you so much for your time, and we would love to have you back. Thank you so much, Felix.、Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody,、Absolutely. bye bye. Happy holidays. Ciao. Happy holidays.